Stephen McGann is with me now this morning. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. I've got to say, this, this book really got me over the weekend. And I mean, I know you've always been interested in your family history, yeah. but to actually bring it all together and put it into book, because me reading it, it's almost like a living drama. I find some of it really upsetting and it, it's not my family. No, but, but, so I can only imagine what it must have been like for you to actually physically put it down on, on paper. Yeah, well, I'm so, I'm so glad you found that in it because looking at these ancestors the way I did, I mean, they began as strangers to me. Yeah. And in a way they are, but then, then you pull them into your family and they become real human lives. And I think I say at the beginning of the book, I try to approach this a bit like an actor with a drama. So you want to look at who were these guys? What was their motivation? How did they survive? As if I was playing them in some ways. So all of those people in that family tree I began to look really closely at. Mm. And I just, like you found, I found it so moving actually just to go through the chapters and to really find out who these people were. It was just an incredibly moving experience. Mm. You know, I'm, by the time I got to the end of it, I was glad I didn't know some of the journey I'd have to make when I started because it was, it was much more searing and, I mean, wonderful, but emotional. Very emotional. And survival um, being one of the key words of yeah. the book in many ways. I mean, you, you go right back, it, well, right the way back, but to your family in Ireland. Yeah. And you couldn't initially find that link. And McGann, no. to me, is, is yeah. the name from home. Your mum, Claire, is an integral part yeah. of the book. And you spoke with her for, for many hours yeah, whilst writing it. And in fact, you, you, you almost said it brought you closer to your mum because it, it made you fully aware of the struggles that your own mum had. And she, she lost twins. She um, did. She, well, she was only 21 herself yeah. when they, and one was stillborn and yeah. one was just too premature and this was to in make a, it. This was a time, she was a 50s girl, like a call the midwife mum. Mm. So she, that was her age. And when she had the first, there were two McGann brothers before all the rest of the ones that people know about, but they died. They died in the hospital. But back then, there was none of the, of the care that you may get now. Yeah. There was nowhere to place these little children after they died, they, they had to go, we had to ask permission for them to go in somebody else's coffin. And th my father handled that and never told my mum where they were. And my mum was a young woman facing this terrible grief and having to put the grief away. Yeah. And then astonishingly, years later, without giving too much of the book away, it, years later, she, and she's in her 50s, one day she wakes up and decides she must get closure. And she goes out all alone and goes and finds these twins, finds out where they're buried. It's the most astonishing thing that she mm -hmm. did. And I spoke to her only yesterday, because we speak every week, and we spoke again about this. This is still very, very fresh in writing a book like this. It's been an experience for us all because that testimony she gave, it brings these things back out. And it was something she really wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, you also talk about um, your struggles with, with asthma yeah. and, and growing yeah. up. And and at one point in, in your teen years, you, you sort of had a bit of a breakdown, really. And yeah. that was something that, it's not that you didn't want to talk about no. it. It was just something you felt you didn't have to talk about until Absolutely. right in the book. And it was a girlfriend at the time suggested you had agoraphobia. Yeah. And That's looking back on all of that now, that, that must even have opened another box for you to deal with. You know what the book was like? The book was like a lot of little doors, and some of them, especially when it comes to your own life, some of them are doors that you haven't opened for a while. And when the book was finally looking at me, when I'd agreed to do it, sat down, started the chapters, when it came to me and came to my teenage depression, it had always been hidden away. I'd been an actor. Everybody thinks, hey, diddly D, you know, I'm, I look fine there. I am stomping around on stage. It was always there in my past. And now I was in my 50s. I decided to open that door because in a way, a book was a great way to do it. And something that I wouldn't necessarily be able to, to speak to a journalist about because I wouldn't begin to know how to explain it. Once you're faced with blank pages, you can go back. And it was like going back to meet that young lad again. And that was very strange and very moving to live with him again, with all of his suffering, how it was undiagnosed and how I had to go out every day, read a newspaper in the park, although my hands were shaking. And then gradually I was offered, as I say in the book, I was offered this amazing experience. I was offered a break in acting. But if you have agoraphobia and anyone out there who suffers from this terrible condition, if you have agoraphobia, the idea of going onto a stage in front of all other people is a nightmare. So I was faced with either I can get over it 
is sort of kill or cure. I can get over it here and become an actor or else just stay at home. Mm. And I did manage to, to conquer it eventually with my first job. But it was a journey and it was, it was very emotional for me to go back and visit that person again. I bet it was. Well, Stephen, as I say, I, I could talk all day about it honestly it's a really moving bit flesh and blood um Stephen McGann it is out now and loads of nuggets in there we'll talk about it was your great uncle was yeah. the last Titanic survivor I mean yeah. there's just so much call the midwife everything yeah. gets a little mention <laughs> it's it's great to meet you Stephen thank you, you thank you thank very you. much